Hello my fellow board gamers and welcome to the channel all about economic board games. Today I'm bringing you an overview of this game here, Navigador. You've got the designer just below there and it's brought to us by these guys at the bottom. This one plays 2-5, to five. it's that medium heavyweight type game. It says about 60-90 to 90 minutes, it's probably more likely 90 plus. Sometimes it's about 2, 2.5 two hours I'd say of a higher player count. And in this game we are sort of trade dynasties, we're taking part in the building up of the whole portuguese colonial empire which is sort of shown on this large map here so you kind of start off with your ships at portugal at the top there you'll be exploring and sailing into these new regions acquiring these colonies and as you do so you'll be getting paid out a bonus of the cheapest one usually so 60 and then hopefully when you go to the colony action you'll be acquiring these and this is how you're going to sort of sell goods you'll also be hoping to build stuff on that action Action. you got these free uh, processing of uh sort of raw materials and they're the factories that do it so the main raw materials in the game are sugar for the white ones you've got gold and then you've got spices you can also buy these buildings you've got your shipyard which lets you build more ships because you're going to be needing those to to sail out and then you've got these churches which lets you get workers for a cheaper price and they can also all of these can be used for multipliers of your end game scoring so looking at your actual player board then this is your dynasty where you're doing all your trading this is where you're storing all those, uh, what we say, process factories. This is your spot for your shipyards. And you can see it's 50 bucks per ship you want to build, depending on how many. So if you've got three of them, you can build three ships, uh, 50 each. And if you want to build a fourth, it depends what phase you're in. So looking at the board, you start off in phase one, and you can see you get one movement on the ships there. So you can move your ships one spot each, and it's going to cost you 100 for each extra worker or ship you want to build. Now, as you progress and explore further along, you see this little red line that takes you into phase two. So then ships can move two spots each and you can see the cost goes up to 200. And then as you move further past the final red line, you head into the third phase and ships can then move three spots because you're going to be starting off in Portugal every time you produce those ships. You really want to get them across and you can see the cost then goes up to 300, if that focuses, per worker or ship, which is why you want to develop your engine and build some of these shipyards and some of these churches now once a player has explored this final region of Naga, uh, what's called nagasaki you can see it's going to cost you two ships to go uh, sort of into there and you dispose of them and two ships into this one once that's been explored you that's the sort of tri trigger of game end you play out one more round and then you tally up all the points or whoever manages to take the last of these buildings triggers game end and you do exactly the same now i should add that the actions in this game are all on this lovely rondelle so it's really streamlined you can see there's two market you got workers sailing building so i'll quickly go through what they do then so at the beginning you're going to pick where you want to go you know the next player can go there as well and this is your starting position so let's just go sailing sailing is all about moving your ships out of portugal and exploring so yeah phase one as we say you get to move once you can move this ship into here and this one here you kind of have to to explore because when you go into a new region you dispose of one of them ships back to your supply you take one of these blue tokens and it was yellow wasn't it so you put that just on there because that is worth vps and on here similar to concordia if you're familiar with that game at the end of the game it's gonna be four victory points for each one of these tokens you acquire and you can get more of these tokens which are known as press uh, privilege should i say and they'll be giving you potential money and more multiplies at the end of the game so back to uh, sailing literally you've sailed in here you then reveal these three which you kind of already done you take the lowest amount of money as a bonus for having done so uh, you get that money and that is literally sailing what else have we got here we've got workers just at the top there if you go to workers this is how you improve your number of workers it's kind of all illustrated on this for how many you've got you can never go lower than two you can never go higher than nine if you do go higher than nine there's, there's a bit of extra money you can acquire for for doing so and on here you look at your churches so we've got one church so we can pay 50 bucks for the first worker any other worker is going to cost us dependent on the the phase so 100 at the moment and that goes up in the later phases now workers you let's just say we'd, we'd bought two workers they are all useful when you actually go to buy these buildings so you can see if you want to buy one of these buildings here the processing factories you're going to need three workers available to be able to do that one you don't spend them as such you just need that many so if you wanted to do say this action here buying the shipyard 
shipyard or building a shipyard and get one of these you need three plus seven seven workers and then you could activate those two buildings into your dynasty what else have we got so that was workers market then there's two of those and this is where you take advantage of your actual colonies and your trade your what they call processing factories now how the market works then is for each uh, good you can sell each good or you can process one good per turn and vice versa you can't trade uh, you can't sell and process the same good on the same turn so looking at this player then you can see they've got one colony that produces sugar so they could sell a sugar which means they get the value of 50 just below it you then reduce the price down by however many you sold so if they had let's just say here they had three colonies that means they could sell three of them at a price of 50 which is 150 and then the price goes down three so you've really uh, reduced the value for your opponents so if you you've utilized that that particular raw material so you can't do any processing you've you've decided to sell in this case your colonies and your remaining uh, little factory here this is a kind of joker it represents any of the three colors and you start off with this one but let's just assume as you've gone through the game you've managed to acquire a couple of gold so now what can you do you've already utilized these three and you've sold them so you've got a choice of gold and spices left you could process two gold units so you look at the gold you go to the the, the right and you can see this red line uh, sort of symbology matches your player ball to help you out there so you can either sell three of them you could treat this as a gold as well or you could treat it as a spice which we're going to do in this case so we're processing two goods and it's on this line which means we're going to get 30 for each so that's 60 you then increase the price which goes up to 17 you want to make sure you not benefit you, your opponents too much if they've got loads of colonies in gold which means they can sell it at that price you're then going to utilize the last random sort of joke orange house as a uh, spice so you're going to get 30 for that so that's how you acquire money using those particular factories but you're increasing the price and that kind of reminds you on your player board at the bottom here so where were we that was the market then which is where you're going to get your money colonies so once you've you've done a bit of sailing and you've revealed some of those colonies this is how you acquire them so if you've got a ship in there you could then buy one of these and that's how you you add more here which is great because when you go to market like we just showed you, you get more money we have pro um privileges so you have to spend a worker to do so so bear that in mind because you want your workers when you go to the building so you want to get the right maths there but you're gonna have to spend one and you get to take any one of these five and these get replenished at the end of each phase or at the start of the the, the next phase should i say and let's just say a player's gone there they've, they've spent a the worker they take this one here and you add it to your board you kind of work your way downwards now uh, you can see now we're going to get five victory points at the end of the game for each shipyard we have and you also instantly get the money below times the number you've currently got so 50 bucks times the one we're going to get 50 money straight away now at the end of the game most of these are going to be filled hopefully and you can see you know you're going to say you got two well let's grab a few you're going to get let's assume we're end of the game you're going to get two times the number of colonies so six points here three times the number of these so three times three is nine four times zero five times one and three times the one there you're also going to get uh, one victory point for each 200 uh, money denomination you have you're going to get one victory point for each ship currently on the board one victory point for each worker in play and if you break you add up all your victory points in this kind of very subtle track around the side and the navigador token breaks ties now I should probably explain what the Navigor token does. So before you pick one of these actions on here, you can choose to use this, and the last player gets it at the beginning of the, the game. And it basically means you can do a sale action which is this one here we've explained already and that can be useful because you can decide to sail so they might come into here uh, and the sail option you get to utilize the, the the currently the one movement each and then they can move to the the colony option now let me just go through a few more actions before i explain how the um the movement of these works we've gone for the privileged ships then this is how you're going to acquire more ships because you you're going to need them at portugal to help you navigate and go on this exploration because for for each one of these you go in you're losing a ship and as you lose ships you need more to be produced to to back them up uh, later on and essentially it's the same as the workers but 
you you go in here and you're going to get your first ship because you got one shipyard is at 50 and then so on is going to be the costs dependent on the phase you're in and we've got another market and then the buildings is the last one we kind of haven't gone through yeah depending on the workers you've got you can come and buy some of these at various costs just above there and they get progressively more expensive now on the opening round each player sort of chosen right i'm going there and you're going here but from then on uh, you're going to get an option uh, with a chance to move up to one to three spots at no cost so this red player could go for the market the buildings or sailing at zero cost but if they want to go beyond that each extra spot is going to cost them one ship from the board and it's taken off back to their supply so a very costly procedure if you're after a certain action now this actual orange ship let's just say the red player had the navigador uh, card it sticks with them there and if they still haven't used that navigator action by the time this comes back round it then automatically goes to the next player and let's just say they used it here before they used the colony option that would go over to the yellow player and then this goes to where they currently are to show that they've then got a full round to to use that and that's pretty much the game you're going to be sailing you're going to be getting more exploration tokens which can be multipliers getting more of these colonies because you want more of those to sell stuff stuff you potentially buying stuff at the market equally you also got the option to buy more colonies on one go if you've got per two workers in a ship in an area you can get a colony so if you've got loads of workers and ships in different areas you could buy several things at once and once you get to the end of the say that trick is game end and you literally do the scoring that i have just gone through and that is pretty much it as i say if you are after a run through of this one i'll be bringing that to you guys next week which will sort of give you a demonstration of how a, a few turns play out there we are navigador